Using your own vocals in your music is one of the most rewarding things out there. I mean, your voice is literally a sample generator that no one else in the entire universe has access to. How cool is that? But with different factors limiting you, like not having a microphone, not knowing how to mix, or living in your parents' basement, using your vocals in your music can be pretty tough to get right. I know because I've been there. But now, after six years of trial and error, I finally figured out the process to make my vocals actually sound good. Helicopter, helicopter, helicopter. And it's not just my vocals, I've also worked with female artists on songs using this system, so it's very versatile. So in this video, I'll show you everything to make your vocals sound perfect, even if all you have is a shitty phone and you live in your parents' basement. But first, we need to go outside. Just kidding, I'm already outside in the middle of the forest. This is actually where I record all my videos. <laughs> now, why is that? It's because the acoustics here are literally perfect. Because this is an open space, there's nothing the sound can bounce off of. I mean, compare it to how my vocals sound right now, when I'm in my bedroom. It sounds much worse, doesn't it? Now, I understand that everyone can just go outside and have perfect peace and quiet, like I have the privilege to. If you live in a city, going to a park and looking for a private spot might be your best bet. But if you can't even have that, your second best option is probably gonna be to record in your wardrobe. Oh, there you are. So the thing with the wardrobe is that if you have a lot of clothes in there, they're gonna do a great job at absorbing the sound. So you're not gonna have that many reflections. Now let's do an experiment. Let's compare all of these acoustic environments. Let's compare all of these acoustic environments. Let's compare all of these acoustic environments. Which one do you think sounds best? Let me know in the comments. Actually, I think you should do experiments like these on your own just to see what works for you. And you should also like experiment with different positioning of the microphone just to see how it affects the sound that's coming through, right? Try out a whole bunch of different shit and see what works best. All right, enough of all that. Let's say you finally recorded the vocal, you have the WAV file ready and you just dragged it into your DAW. Now what? So I'm in Ableton right now and I have these vocals that I recorded. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording. Don't pay attention to how <laughs> great I am at rapping or singing. <laughs> pay attention to the fact that I recorded this on my old Motorola. So I intentionally did not use my microphone, even though I could have. I did this just to prove a point. I'm cool, right? I'm pretty cool. You have to admit I'm kinda cool. Leave a like. And now I'm going to show you a simple three-step framework to mixing them. But before we do anything, let's just add some noise reduction to these vocals. This is gonna be kinda like step zero. So let's press Control F to search for the Reduce Ambience preset in Ableton, and this is what that sounds like. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording vocals. And you can hear that it starts to sound kind of distorted, so let's just reduce the amount to 20%, because 100 is way too much. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording vocals. Or Depending on your conditions, reducing the noise may or may not be necessary. For example, there's gonna be much less noise if you're using a proper microphone compared to just a phone but I usually do a little bit of noise reduction just in case. Step one. Now listen up because by just doing this you will already get like 80% of the results already. Now when you're going to be recording the vocals you will naturally accentuate some words while barely whispering others. And not every vowel is going to be the same. And in the musical context, this can be problematic because we want to hear everything equally, at least most of the time. So in step one, you want to compress the vocals. And by compressing the vocals, I mean making their loudness a little bit more consistent. But there is a certain type of compression 
that will accomplish that and much more. OTT compression. If you're in Ableton, you can press Ctrl F to search for the OTT preset and it will be there. Or if you're a plebeian and use some other DAW, worry not because you can still use a standalone VST by Xfer. Just go Google OTT by Xfer Records. It's going to pop up. And this is a free plugin, by the way. You, you can download it for free. I don't have an affiliate link or anything like that. And it's a preset for the multiband compressor. Basically, it pushes the loudest parts of your sound down while pushing the quietest parts of your sound up. And I always knew I had like compress my vocals or whatever, but I really struggled to get consistent results. When I discovered OTT, my mind was just blown. It's just like it turns any vocals it touches into a professional sounding record. It's pretty much a shortcut to get a great sounding vocal. Check out the difference it makes on some of my tracks. Helicopter, 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 for your bonnet, for your bonnet, helicopter. Now, back to the tutorial. I went to the forest to get better acoustics. I look on the ground and there's how many? Two sticks. I went to the forest to get better acoustics. I look on the ground and there's how many? Two sticks. I went to the forest to get better acoustics. I look on the ground and there's... I mean, like, the difference is huge here. What the heck? Much more clarity, right? Much more oomph. But... And this is another big but. It sounds cool and all, but now you also get all this noise in the silent part. I look on the ground and there's how many? Two sticks. We've reduced the noise in step zero, but now, because of the extreme compression, a lot of it has risen back to be super loud. Remember, it's raising the quiet parts to be loud again. So, to take care of this, you could trim out the silence in your vocals. You would just have to slice them up using command E and cut out every single silent part in your vocals so that the audio clips are only active when you're actually singing. And you would also have to fade them in and out just to make sure that there's absolutely zero silence. But that's tedious. And come on. We're more cheeky than that, aren't we? Let's search for the envelope follower and let's add it before the OTT. And this is a tool that automatically tracks the volume of your audio. So when I play the vocal, you'll see it starts going up like this. I went to the forest to get better acoustics. I look on the ground and there's how many? Two sticks. But you see, it's not going up enough. So you need to crank that gain now. I went to the forest to get better acoustics. I look on the ground and there's how many? Two sticks. I went to the forest to get better acoustics. See, that's better. Now you can choose the remote remote mapping mode and map this controller to the dry wet of your OTT. I went to the forest to get better acoustics. I look on the ground and there's how many? Two sticks. I went to the forest to get... So that now the OTT will only be triggered when the vocal is actually playing. So no more icky noise. Good job. Now for step two. After the OTT, you might want to play with the EQ a little bit. And everyone's voice is different, so you'll have to experiment and see what works for you. But my biggest tip I can give you is to not use the standard EQ8 and use the EQ3 instead, at least initially. With only three EQ bands, it's going to be much less overwhelming. And trust me, you'll focus on the things that actually matter. With the standard EQ, it's much easier to get lost in the unnecessary details. So I'm going to try that for myself right now. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording vocals. So this is the settings I ended up with. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording. And now I guess you could like experiment with the EQ8 as well. Just make sure that this actually sounds good and you're not going off like the visuals in here because that's what very often tends to happen. And don't spend like too much time in here. This is beneficial, but it's not that important. And now for step three. It's time to add some character and some finishing touches to this vocal just to, you know, make it more unique and more characteristic. So this is where you get creative with the effect. There is much more room for interpretation here. And even I use different effects depending on the vibe of the song I'm working on. So this varies a lot. Anyways, I'll show you some of the effects I use most often. So first off, Stereo Touch. This one's great. I actually almost always use this one. It adds that Stereo touch, you know? I don't know how else to put it, but I feel like I don't get that same effect from any other plugin. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording vocals. It 
makes the sound a little bit wider, I guess. And this is a free plugin, by the way. You can Google Stereo Touch by Vox and Go, and it should pop up. Anyways, I like to use that one, but chorus also sometimes sounds really cool. I like to set the rate to a bit higher, like 5 hertz. I don't think the chorus sounds that great in, in this case specifically, but there are times when it sounds phenomenal. I'm gonna give you an example of how I used it in one of my tracks. Uh, here it is. So that's chorus and then of course you have reverb, delay, echo and all that jazz that I won't bore you with. And now for a speed round. I'm gonna quickly bombard you with some bonus tips that I think are really important but I just couldn't fit them anywhere else in this video. So it's that time of day again. It's bonus tip time. So if you still hate your vocals for whatever reason, the single easiest way to mask that is to layer multiple takes together. Check out the difference it makes. I am very good at recording vocals. 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 And another tip related to that is sometimes you're inevitably gonna mess up and you won't get the timing right. Either the layers of the vocals are not gonna sync up to each other or the vocal just won't sync up to the tempo of the project. Lucky for you though, Ableton makes it incredibly easy to fix up the timing of your vocals. Just turn on warp mode on the clip. I am very good at recording vocals. And now adjusting the time is as simple as making a warp marker and dragging it to where you want it. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good. But now you might start to notice that your vocals are sounding kind of all warped and messy and weird. I am very good at recording vocals. And that's because the warp mode is set to beats. So if we change it to Complex Pro, I am very good at recording vocals. I am very good at recording vocals. It instantly sounds normal. Tip number three. Now I want to preface this by saying I'm not a singing coach, and I can't sing for shit, to be honest with you. But what really helps me sound less trash. <laughs> when I do try to sing, is reminding myself to stay in my vocal range. My voice is a bit deeper, so I have a lot of trouble going into the higher notes. And for some reason, when I try to sing, I still go for those higher notes anyways, because I guess that's what my brain associates with singing, that I always have to go super high or whatever. I don't know, I, I might just be stupid. Just, just stay in your vocal range, all right? Play to your strengths, not your weaknesses. All right, if you like my style of teaching and you'd like to learn more from me about mixing in general, not just related to the vocals, sign up to the waiting list of my masterclass about mixing for bedroom producers. I'm working on some crazy in-depth content in there, so sign up if you want to be the first to know about it. The link to that is going to be in the video description. So yeah, that's it for today. Cheers!